And first we'll have an evocation by Councilor David Thornton. Everyone, please rise. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for bringing us together to help our people. And one of the most important departments, and that's the health department. We have a lot of people out there that have needs in health. And would you please help us bring forward and, and satisfy their needs. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Ms. Shelley, will you give the roll call? Yes, ma'am.
two or three actual full-time positions there. They've always been contractors. But even uh, two or three of the contractors that are there have been there longer than I have. So um, the internal medicine guys, uh, we still have, I think we've lost two. The three, that, the three that are still there have been there a lot longer than I have. So, uh, family medicine, we still have the same group that started one, that was there when I arrived five years ago. And then uh, Dr. Dr. Knife Chief was the first uh, clinical director after Dr. Mopper. Not, not, not a lot of turnover, no. Like, was it you know, 10 or? I'd say 5 to 10 percent. Yeah. Or five to ten people. That's five to ten people, yes. Sir. So it's not twenty or twenty five doctors in the last few years? No. The the contract referral your your budget for clerical for the contract referral is how much? For contract health referrals? Yes, sir. Almost it's right up around right around ten million. Yeah. And out of that, I wonder how many Cherokee Nation citizens, how much, what part of that is Cherokee Nation? I don't know. I have to go through the area and get the, I don't get a breakdown of it. Yeah, somewhere around half? I wouldn't even venture to guess, but it could be. Yes. If, if we're about half of your, of your, of the shares of your business, if I said four to six, would that yeah. be a decent number? Good. I'd go along with you there. Good. Good. Thank, you. thank you. Councilman Keener. Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, congratulations for your collections being up. Yes, thank That's you. That's good. And also, congratulations for being the first baby from the hospital thank in you. Oklahoma. I know that you and your staff worked a long time on that. Yeah. About, probably about a year, hadn't it? Yes. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Councilor Watts. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. That was also what I wanted to congratulate you on was the baby friendly, and it, not just out of Indian Health Service hospitals, but out of all hospitals in Oklahoma. Is that correct? That's correct. It's the whole state. And I, I guess uh, the staff that really went behind that, I don't know, uh, was Ms. Myers? Yes, Ms. Myers. General Please tell her thank you and congratulations as well, not just the whole facility. Now, she is a, just so you know, sorry to interrupt you, but she, okay. she's a commission officer. We've already put in for a, uh, an award for her. Well, if we can help write recommendation letters to her, that's a very meaningful yes, award to be getting, and, and we'd love to help she, support she that. Yes, she did. Thank you. So I if Linda can on. draft something up for us, we'll put that in with it from yeah. us. Um, also, how is it going with the Cherokee Nation Marshal Service response times on any issues? Their, their reports to us are brief. I mean, it only shows maybe two to five incidents a month, and I don't know if that reflects what you really need. I'm, I mean, I'm just concerned. After last Cherokee month, Nation. I went back and checked to see if they were actually responding to transport uh, suicidal patients, and they are. Okay, very yeah. good. So uh, we, we have stopped using the ambulance service, and, and the Marshal Service are transporting those and they said they've not had any issues with them coming up to get them. Okay, very good. Thank you for mm -hmm. that. Um, also, how is the MRI um, going? Or is that, is that still OH, our Oklahoma City area office? We have it still there. I have turned, we, on our end, we have turned everything into the area office as far as paperwork and it's up to the area office and engineering staff to uh, take it from there. I wish I, I continue to ask for timelines. I, could, uh, uh, I wish I, I wish I could give you a, a definite answer. Well, I appreciate that. And it looks like on the actuals for uh, contract health service that you only approved 21.8 percent of the contract health files or uh, in this past previous month reflected by the report. Yes. Because if it's a deferred, it's effectively denied. Yes. That's correct. Is that because then that doesn't have to do with money? That's still just medical need, even though we're in the cycle of no money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, that's correct. Very good. Twenty-one point eight percent approved. That's even more dismal. If I'm if I was calculating it correctly, 
because normally we're at 40 to 45 percent maybe on average I mean that's just your reality you're dealing with so well I appreciate your time thank you thank you George thank you madam chairwoman anyone else have any questions comments no thank you for that good report thank you next is Ms. Davis with Cherokee Nation Health Services Good afternoon. Hi. Um, I think I would, I'll go ahead and begin by uh, letting you know our ambulatory visits by clinic <coughs> for the month of May. Loma P. Mankiller, there were 10,260. Redberg Smith, 9,407. Salina, 8,154. J, 6,513. Noada, 4,473. <coughs> Excuse me. Muscogee, 14,152. Bartlesville, 1,910. Benita, 4,388. The Gadoogie Employee Health Clinic that's here in town saw 305. And finally at Hastings, they saw 28,834. And that's uh, included in your report that you get every month. And it also delineates how many were actual Cherokees seen in each of those uh, respective clinics. I think one of the council members had a question about that. So I just thought it'd be worth mentioning uh, again. Uh, we've hired an outside source to analyze our coding and billing practices. And we began with the physical therapy department and already they have discovered over $100,000 in missed opportunities or miscoded uh, charges. So we're looking forward to the continued evaluation of that process and we'll also probably move into the OR for a full evaluation because normally an OR is your gener uh, revenue generators for the hospitals. And uh, I know he's been to the Pavita Clinic to look at their physical therapy, physical therapy department and help us to do that everywhere we provide these services. Uh, Dr. Jones reported to me just before this meeting that um, I had mentioned on several occasions that he's going back and looking at Medicaid claims that were denied or no follow-ups, and we have collected or billed $1,060,000 through September. And so I want to commend him and his staff for the diligence they're doing in uh, collecting those kinds of things. They're now starting on October for this physical year, and I'll try to keep you apprised of how that goes. And we're also working on a policy because right now there's not a good process of who has the authority to write off or excuse a, a, a claim that's not collected on. So we're going to tighten that up considerably so that someone in a senior uh, level of administration would be the ones to determine that. Uh, we have nine vacant providers positions for the month of May. The feasibility study continues for the hospital. We had a visit from the Camden group in uh, May on the 30th and 31st, and there's conference calls at least weekly. And I think by, we're hoping by the 1st of August they'll wrap that up. I think they're looking at scheduling another visit, which is usually, I think, two weeks before the final analysis is presented. Uh, we started customer service training for the health department, and CMB is uh, helping us with that, and I've heard very good uh, feedback from that, so we'll keep that going and get it throughout the clinics to improve that service. The emergency department saw 5,203 patients. They had 7% left without being seen. The standard is 3%, so uh, we have a, meet, a committee that meets weekly to processes there. The OR set a record, record number of surgical cases at 407, so the OR staff at Hastings is committed to be commended for that. And the colonoscopy wait list, I reported on this on a couple of occasions. This time last year we were 1,800 patients waiting, and I'm happy to report that there are now less than 100. And Dr. Blue, Dr. Fishing Hoff, and that entire department is to be committed for helping us address that. Jack Brown Treatment Center, since we're building a new one, I thought it'd be good to go ahead and mention to you guys how, how busy we are there. We have 16 patients there. Um, the elder care of 
program has 124 patients, and they're in the process of adding on 36,000 square feet. And that's for relocation of administrative buildings and expansion of the current uh, space that they need to deliver care. And it also would help with fire codes because if more patients are there during peak hours, we, uh, we could exceed the amount of patients we have to meet fire code. We did experience a diesel spill at Hastings last month and uh, we're working with IHS to help us with the corrective action for that tank prevent this from happening again and the cleanup is very expensive and we're offering online refills I don't know if you've seen the press releases but um, we're real excited about that you can go to the Cherokee.org website go under healthcare and then pharmacy refill meaning you have to register at the site you need your chart number and then the uh, prescription number off of your bottle which I think you're re responding to feedback or questions from the last couple of meetings, and I'm not quite sure what they're trying to explain. 
It's on page 19 um, on, concerning the 5% set aside. Could you explain what you're trying to put across there? Where prepare that document? Is Numbered page 19 for us. Okay. I don't know what it is for. Uh, I was, I thought it was uh, kind of a visual of total referrals, and that's by facility. Is that for this past month, or is this in total since inception? That's, that's for the past month. So I, I thought uh, I put it and I put it in order there uh, by. By size, it's in Claremore, and but normally the option of the So the way I read this, we'll pick on Claremore. Well, let's pick on Stillwell because supposedly Adair County is 100% covered by Cherokee Nation already on, on the CHISDA contract health service, inpatient, outpatient. Right. So you're saying that there's somebody from outside of Adair, Cherokee, and Sequoia County. It was either inpatient, outpatient, maybe Claremore or somewhere else. It was a Cherokee Nation citizen living in the 14 county jurisdiction that showed up at Stillwell and would be five, eligible for the 5% set aside? No, no. no. The, you see what I'm saying? Well, the, the report I do every month, just the one you've seen since I started doing it in 04, okay. that's broken down by clinic. And I, I just give you guys totals. And just, just, but I, I have the numbers back. It's, it adds up by clinic. So I look at those, which is those. So this is really all contract health. Yes. What's 322.88 then? That's when I took, uh, I did this about a month ago. I took the total CHS referrals for uh, Claremore service unit. Okay. And multiplied it by the percentage, estimated percentage of that. Does that make sense? No. So, so Sorry, historically when we go through the, the Claremore, <laughs> The Claremore referrals, because uh, out of all their denials, a good portion are from Tulsa. They live in South Tulsa. They, you know, they're. I mean, uh, they're ineligible. Right. You know, they're ineligible. They're from various uh, organizations, or they're not chosen. <coughs> so, they fall outside of the eligibility. I guess I'm not seeing a clear number. So, so the second page twenty. This is actually who was funded. Is that correct? Either through a regular contract health service monies or the five percent set aside. Yes. Which is great. We really appreciate that. But I guess what we were, I thought we were getting at was a separation. Do we have an idea of what this unmet need is outside of Cherokee Nation, Chitta area, right? Am I using the right IHS lingo? that where Cherokee Nation, the 5% set aside fills that hole where there's tribal citizens in 11 of the 14 counties that are either inpatient, outpatient, covered by somebody that's not Cherokee Nation contract health service. And I'm not seeing, where are the numbers in here that says, for example, in Rogers County, in this past month, whatever this report reflects, that there were 602 case files for contract health service that would have been reflected of possibly needing 5% eligibility and then how many of those were denied that were eligible or approved? Does well, that make more sense? Yes. I'm not seeing the, that. In the, in this packet. And we got this late, so I mean I think I got it, but I didn't have time to print it from the before I got here. Uh, well. So the the 555, those are the total Claremore referrals. So, uh, so then if it was a Rogers County referral, that would be in that group. Uh, but that also includes all of the, uh, the ones from Sepulpa, Coweta, the other facilities around there. I guess here's the numbers I'm looking for today. How many Cherokee Nation citizens, regardless of where they live, apply and, and get a referral and then is it because they're at, at large outside of the jurisdiction or they're in and is it inside a jurisdiction of a non-CN 
CHS, Cherokee Nation Contract Health Service? Or is it that they're they're already eligible and they're already getting approved this 97% plus rate that we right. see? That's not who, I mean, I, I care about those people and I want to continue to see those numbers, but I'm trying to set out what is this unmet need that this 5% is actually addressing? Does that make more sense? And maybe we can't get to the numbers, I don't know. Said the, the title of it's May CHS Referrals by Facility. And I thought it was, uh, if you see the total for Claremont, um, the total for Claremont was, uh, when you include all the other service units that come in there, it is uh, more than 521. It actually goes, they add, you add uh, 237 from the other facilities, which would be Indian Health Resource Center, Tulsa, Mulgee, Sepulpa. Those total 237. The ones coming from our facilities are 195. So that brings the total, but that's when the, this, this is a more. Okay, so if I read this correctly, let me make sure because I don't want to make any assumptions. Is there's 953 in May 2013, there's 953 referrals that were made to Cherokee Nation Contract Health Service saying they felt like maybe these were potentially eligible under the 5% set aside. Those were 953 referrals looked at by Claremont. Looked at by considered, just Claremont. Considered by Claremont. All the others are ours. 1970 is Hastings. Uh, 968 is Muskogee. Salisaw is 713. Nowata is 669. Let me ask this a different way. How many, how many referrals did you get in the month of May 2013 for your staff that were not part of your regular Cherokee Nation contract health service referrals that you had to deal with in order to determine if it was 5% set aside eligible? That's the 953. That's the 953. Out of that came three, two, 305 eligible. Okay, so your workload in May, and in just on the 5% dividend, was 953 files total. Yes. And then you found that basically a third of those Yes. essentially were actually eligible so then out of the 282 how many did you actually fund the crew 135 so where is that number on there? that's on the it's very easy on the very last page that's the one you see every month so but you only have, you approved roughly less than half right but the others are call-ins or things that are we can't we can't approve them because it was a we can approve them but we have no information to prove whatever emergency call in or some kind of other thing was denied during that time. So they've got a notification from Claremore that they need to appeal that and turn in their records and do all that, just like we have in our system. If somebody is taken directly to Sequoia Memorial, it's uh, they get a letter in the mail along with a form and then they appeal that. They say, here's what happened. We were at, we were at the uh, county fair. Uh, Grandma passed out and you know, went down, and she was taken by ambulance to the emergency room. So we don't, we enter that denial as a denial, but we send out a, a form and they respond back with the medical records and those things. So those are deferrals in our city. Because they're dirty. In at Claremore, they're denied. Okay, so 135 were approved. How many were deferred out of the 282? 145. 145, but we had 13 of those typical referrals that are that come through that aren't like that, that were deferred from lack of information. Like 145 or 13? Oh. Sorry. I'm Both. 145 plus 13. And what's the difference? Well, okay, so okay, I there's, want a, there's, two different kinds of, there's two different kinds of deferrals. 
There's one that is, it's a call in that there's not a, there's not a way to, they may still okay, be in the hospital. Okay, that's 145, so right. that's a 13. <laughs> Those are, we had 13 referrals that we had no information to make uh, a medical decision on. For instance, if it was for a sleep study, all of the referrals had a sleep study. So we've sent that back for more information. And I've worked with George and with Vicki, and we've been working on this two or three times this month, George, to, to Okay, but that doesn't total to 282. <coughs> I'm just, I mean, because if I can't read this report, a constituent's just going to be like all over the place. Then I get like all these questions. And I know you have a really tough job, Britt, so thank you for letting me work through this with you. You're the person that you would love or hate. <laughs> Depending on your answer. Me too. 147. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's 147. It was pending. I have. Okay, and then that's it. And yes. so that includes these that 13. Includes 13. And I, this was the final thing, and I, I was working on that spreadsheet that has the graphs and everything. I've been having that on my Does, desktop. Maybe my line of questioning gives you a better idea of what at least I'm looking for. I don't know what the rest of the council's looking for, but that gives me an idea better, or a better idea of how this 5% is being expended and how many people are reaching out for this program. Now, out of this 953, can you tell whether they're Cherokee Nation citizens and maybe they're at large? They could be. I haven't. Because this would that's include non-Indians. That's not a. Right? Uh, no, it wouldn't include non-Indians. It'll include non-Cherokees. It includes every every Indian that had a referral that was denied in Claremont. Not okay. a deferred. And that they might live. And I've saw. I've seen them in Kansas. I've seen them. They come all. They come from all over the state. <clears throat> Like they, if they see a doctor in Chickasaw Nation, there's one that sees a doctor in Chickasaw Nation that lives in the Claremore Chesda. Okay. So the referrals come from all over, but they live in one of the Claremore's areas. Thank you, Britt. I, 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 I think I helped the understanding there. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, and, and I had a, um, one more uh, question for Connie. What is this? Why am I reading about it in the Wall Street Journal? Well, there was a local release. Uh, Why am I reading about it in the newspaper, I guess, instead of hearing about more of it? Maybe I missed something. But I was trying to figure out why we hadn't really been informed before it hit the newspaper. That's what I was trying to... Oh, well, we are constantly looking at ways to uh, be resourceful with our contract health funds. And a trend that we notice, we get tons of back pain referrals. And there's lots of work to be done in the back pain area. <clears throat> you know, we send them for injections, back surgery, and this is a, a resource that we partnered with that exhausts um, opportunities in physical therapy. They even use chiropractic, which I'm very happy about because personally. And so we're looking at ways just to treat our back pain patients better and then hopefully avoid many of the surgeries that we see. That, I mean, that sounds exciting because I really heard about it um, from chiropractors that got alerted about it. And then when they started asking questions, it was frustrating to me that I had to say, well, I really don't know. I know I'm on the health committee, I'm sorry. I mean, but I really don't know. Yeah. Okay. We'll try to do a better job. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Connie, can you give me a little short update on what's going on down at Redbird? Well, we're making progress on the renovation of the old clinic. I think we're looking at the first of the year, hoping for a little bit earlier to have that completed. We're meeting with the architects and we're at what percent completion? Almost completely done, so that will be going out for bid very soon. We're meeting. Um, weekly with uh, up to, on the Oshalada project and we're trying to go to those communities and visit with the, those people there and make it more convenient for them. We're going to Jay and death by meetings right now. Can you tell me about the dialysis center at Salsa? Are they still are they still being limited to the one patient? Are they 
taking any more. They've been approved by Medicare and Medicaid yet. I have not heard that they have, but I will check with you and let you know for the end of the day. Anyone else have any questions? Of Mr. King. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Tony, can you uh, just brief everyone just uh, a little bit on the uh, chiropractic care that you're proposing? Well, I'm going to defer to Dr. Montgomery and let him. Okay. As Ms. Davis said, the back pain is a common problem, both acute and chronic, and it's a significant, um, involves a significant amount of money for chronic care. We refer a lot of our patients out, our travel citizens out for care outside of our system for you know, services that aren't directly provided. Because the pattern of care is not very uniform, you might get referred depending on who your doctor is, you might go to a chiropractor, you might go to a back surgeon, you might go to a variety of different places. We wanted to partner with Palladian. They're a group of experts in the field of treatment of musculoskeletal pain, including chiropractors, neurosurgeons, neurologists, physical therapists. They've got a panel that comes up with protocols, guidelines on how to treat people with musculoskeletal back pain. And that might, again, what our clinicians are going to do, what our providers are going to do is they're going to feed this information on, about the patient to this group, look through that information, and then come up with recommendations on what would be the best form of care based on these protocols. And that best form of care might include referral to a chiropractor, which we haven't done uh, very often in the past. So this group also went out into the community, identified the chiropractors that are in, in, in right of the, right the community so they know who they're working with. They, in turn, are going to give these recommendations to the providers to refer the patient for, for the care, the most appropriate care. Does that answer your question? Yeah, the set uh, uh, amount that they can charge for whatever the care is required. You mean the chiropractor? Yes. Well, again, fees will differ based you know, on uh, Out in the private sector, we don't have total control of what some uh, some charges. We try to get feedback and look at where the most optimal pricing occurs, but we don't have total control over that. What I think we're really going to focus on most, though, is the best quality of care, try to provide more uniform care, and in turn, that could potentially lead to significant savings overall for all the patients that we, we serve. Any direct answer to your question? Yes, thank you. Sure. Connie, next month, I guess we'll have a policy for the 90-day prescription. Is that correct? I emailed Friday evening a draft. So, Are we, we check to, to see. I, I intend, I figured you would uh, review it over the weekend and um, have questions. Did you guys get it? I did. You did? I know one person at least got it. I received it just having a time. Right. Well, I didn't know if we were going to discuss it today or wait till next month. So I said, we can put it on the agenda next month. Okay, that would be fine. Okay. And, and there will be an analysis too on the, I know at one time there was a projection of 50 million over 10 years lost. Um, will there be, I've heard, 6 to 8 million a year now. So. We're trying to gather all the information that we can to help keep you as a body informed because I know, you know you're concerned about the financial impact as well. And what we hope to do beginning in August is give you a report on how much we do collect in our fees for pharmacy under the current 30-day refill. And then watch as we trend towards a 90-day. Give you uh, What I'm asking to do is go back to 2008, I believe, is when we changed the policy and see what percentage of our patients were actually receiving 90-day refills at that time. And then we can maybe predict that that same number would still receive that. So we're looking for those numbers so that we can kind of plan. And then also, um, I'll give you guys a report monthly on how it, it's impacting us financially. So the reality is if we implement this in October, we're not going to see a true financial impact because the billing process and just the way things go, I don't think until probably February. Mm -hmm. So, but I was going to see after six months. Yeah, we're all right. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair. Anyone else have any questions? 
Councilor Smith. Connie, our behavioral health, how do we, uh, there's a lady just called and said her grandson had to go to court. Do they make them go to behavioral health? Can we help those people? Well, we can make an appointment and see them. There's so many, I hesitate because there, there, we get uh, requests to do certain screens a, a lot of times, and sometimes if it's court ordered, there are some of our behavioral health staff who can do some evaluations and some who cannot. So we would make every effort to uh, to, to help them, but who can I, who's asking, I guess. Who can I give them a number to call? Uh, Dr. B. I'll text it to you after the week. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. No. I have a comment, and uh, my brother and his grandson were injured in a four wheeler accident, and he had a bleed on the brain. It was pretty serious. We brought him to Hastings, and it was just phenomenal the speed and how many people were working with him. And, it was just no time. They had the helicopter there to take him to St. Francis, and it all turned out good. It reabsorbed and everything. But I've got to tell you about his little ten-year-old grandson that lives next door to me. He's my sidekick at all my community meetings and everything. He was sort of roughed up a little bit, and so they all went on to Tulsa, and I stayed with him at Hastings, and he was waiting for his medicine, and they were just so congenial. Nobody knew that we were anybody. Just ordinary people. That's you know, I didn't go in there and say I'm chair of the health committee or anything like that. And I said, Could he have a blanket? He's cold, his hat on shorts and he had a big old hole torn out of his shirt and he just looked so pitiful and I said, and on top of that he's starving and so in a little bit they brought him a blanket and so his dad had pulled up outside and I texted him he was hungry and he went out to warm up, he came back in, he had a big sack of food. And I said, Oh, did your daddy bring you that food? He said, No. That nurse over there brought me that food. And he had sandwiches and chips and pudding pop and pudding and a spoon and everything to eat it with. And they were just so wonderful to him. And he felt so good because he asked them, they said, you'll see the doctor in a minute. And they said, he said, which doctor will I see? And the meanest one, the one that gives all the shots. And so, <laughs> He was really carrying on with them, and they just treated everybody so good. And my family was so happy with the treatment because I compared it to the treatment that my sister got when she fell and was really injured in the ambulance at Salisaw would only take her to St. Edwards. I would never go back there <laughs> under any circumstances. So it's no comparison because of that. It's because we've got the urgent care. And it weeds everybody out that's not really an emergency. And I just think we've got a wonderful system. I can't say enough good things about it. I just tell them when I get back to my meeting, I want to tell everybody what a great job all y'all are doing. Well, I appreciate that. None of the so. staff at Hastings will as well. So, it's very good. Glad your brother's okay. That's scary. Well, it was quite an ordeal because he couldn't remember anything. You know, we had to repeat it to him all the way up here. What happened to him? But, He's okay now. I'm back at work, so we're glad. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Jones, I want to commend you on all of the wonderful services dental has done and finding all that lost money that hasn't been collected in a long time. So we're really happy. We're still working on it. We're good. Okay, and old business. Councilor Light. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I'd like to make a motion to take the 5% set aside to the Claremore service area for Cherokee only patients within the Cherokee Nation jurisdiction on the service area. Put that the form of the motion. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes. Can you restate the motion, please? I'd like to take the 5%. Contract held set aside for LA 2511 and make it available for the Claremore Hospital Service Unit area only within and also within the Cherokee Nation jurisdiction area. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I'll second it with a friendly amendment in hopes that you'll accept is that it's all inpatient, outpatient contract health service within the jurisdiction of the Cherokee Nation not already covered by Cherokee Nation contract health service because we have patients that are affected by Creek Nation contract health service as well as the Miami Clinic contract health service area up there and I think, I don't remember that it's Craig, I think it's Ottawa and Wagner. Uh, yes. Okay, uh, we've heard this motion. Any discussion? Yes? I just wonder what the impact that would be. I'd like to consider what the impact this will be if we approve this. I asked both folks to address that. Brett, I'll ask you to validate the information. But as I recall, I think we practice under that policy at the beginning of the implementation of the 5% fund. When I first started this job a little over a year ago, and the funds just weren't being set, uh, spent. And at that time, we went back to the Legislative Act that said make it available to all the Cherokees. Brett, is that right? Yes. That's why I recall. So initially, we were. Initially, we were following what Council Malay is proposing to that policy. When did the policy get rescinded? I, I, yes. yes. It was rescinded? The policy was rescinded? Or modified? Yeah. I don't remember right now. Okay. All right. We did it this time. We did it. Council Parker? Yeah, I am. Yes, this is Dr. Graham. Uh, would you give us, uh, on the same question, would you give us the pros and cons how it's going to affect the total budget? I thought we tried this one. Well, what, we, what we know right now uh, and believe if the numbers stay the same is that we would only spend about a third to a half of those funds on that sort of uh, restriction. And that's why um, after we've been doing it about a year, we expanded it to be beyond that. Uh, we were taking care of all those denials, and of the 900, you heard, you know, Brett say only 300 end up being eligible for it, so a third, and then we're approving a large percent of those uh, initially, and then as they get the further information on that additional numbers that he cited earlier, uh, a large percent of those get approved. So it's a, a relatively small number that are not being approved right now, um, and if history proves that we would. We would have funds left over um, if we isolate that account that way. Okay. Yes. So, Joe, so we are basically serving the population for Claremore contract help. And we're going to have funds left over if we do this. Which would go into what? If, it, if they're restricted to that, we would just be carrying them over. Um, and just building up a huge pot at Claremore. Now, you all are working on bringing contract help from Claremore to where it will all be we treated by the same office, uh, air, all for all 14 counties. Yes, ma'am. Brett Hayes and I went up and met with Indian Health Service leadership uh, two weeks ago. And we talked to them about uh, Craig County, um, where Benita's at. Right now that's run by Claire Moore. Um, we talked about uh, seeing all uh, Indian citizens within that county. Uh, and they're getting, going to be getting us numbers of Cherokee only and then all other Indians in that county. And then we also spoke about Tulsa and Rogers County, uh, Cherokee citizens only. And as soon as we get those numbers, um, and I've had a chance to analyze them and, and show them to Chief Baker, uh, then we'll talk with you all about that and, and decide whether we're going to it or not. So yes, we're, we're close to having all that information now. And um, we, we could probably move pretty quickly on that once we make a decision. What is our timetable, a couple months? Um, once we make a proposal, the law says that the agency has 90 days <coughs> by law to approve it or deny it. So from the time we made an official proposal, uh, that would be the maximum amount of time. 
I suspect we're looking at less than a couple of weeks uh, to analyze things and, and get back you know, with uh, the chief's office and if you all want to be made aware before we do anything, then we'd be looking at next month's uh, health committee meeting to be able to bring some information forward about that. And then 90 day, you know, give us a day or two to make a proposal. The area has said that uh, they consider that a maximum also. They said they would do everything they could to work to get it done quicker. Uh, and some of it may depend on how quickly we can open up our funding agreement and compact with them and negotiate in those dollars. So 60 days would probably give us a sufficient answer. I, I think we can have a, a response back to you by next health committee um, about the analysis and then, you know, if we were to, to make a proposal to them at just however fast they work, but 90 days maximum after that. Yes. If all questions are addressed. Councilor Lee's He's next. And then Councilor Thornton. Yes, okay, Councilor Thank you, ma'am. And, and here, here's the point. I mean, for two, almost two years now, everybody, your group has been saying, we're about to work this out. We're about to work this out. And Hastings is sitting here 98% approved. And Claremore is doing 28.1, and Brett's not doing a whole lot more, as far as I can tell. If I'm wrong, I apologize. And so my people are still getting the short end of the stick. Now, if you could figure out some way for Brett to increase that approval immediately, I'll hold off on this. But if you can't guarantee me that, we're going to have an up or down vote, I hope, today. Well, I, because I'll my people are not getting served here on this 5% fund, and I'm, I'm at a point to where I want to push the envelope. I'll ask Brett if he can give us a percentage on on what percent of that 300. Is it at 94 well, or 97 Let me percent? tell you something. If Tina's people weren't getting served, she'd be up here pounding her shoe on the desk, getting this thing fixed right now. So, uh, and uh, so that's what I'm doing. Potential one These are my people on Wagner County, and they are part of the system. A, a potential one-third uh, that are eligible of those 900 are getting through our system. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll again ask Brett if he has an overall percentage, but the other thing is that um, if we do Craig, Tulsa, and, and Rogers, uh, and do the Cherokee only within them, one of the things that, that we will use, and one of the things that makes it a potential to do now, where in the past we didn't think it was uh, very financially feasible to do, uh, two things. One of them is that uh, the CHS budget has in, been increased fairly significantly uh, the last few years by the government. Uh, and the other thing is the monies that you all have made available to us through the 5% dividend. If we didn't have those monies, we wouldn't be able to uh, assume operations of all those without causing a decrease overall in services. And so we do believe now with this 5% money and with the increased funds that Indian Health Service, Claremore Service Unit has received over the last few years, it makes it much more financially feasible than when we looked uh, four years ago, three to four years ago. I understand what you're saying, but I'd like to have some promises made to that. Brent, do you know an overall percentage of that third, roughly 32% to get through what you're <clears throat> able to approve per no, month? No, the, they kind of they can lose their identity once they're on in the OPMS system. It's a lot of the, like if somebody has a, um, a say, a new replacement that comes from NOWADA, that one of the gentlemen we talked about, because it went through Hastings and then got done here, it, well, from, from looking at the system, it's a Hastings referral. But really, the patient was a NOWADA. So it's just a, it's somewhat limited by our system, because it's a little bit replaceable. I, I, because we're using the same criteria that we're using with all of our other patients, um, I would be shocked if that 300 people that are making it through are not at near the same approval percentage as the rest of our system is. Um, we may not be able to prove it though um, very easily for you. Um, but then if we go ahead and assume operations of those three other counties, um, outpatient only is what we're looking at. We're not looking at inpatient right now. And, um, the reason we're not doing that is because we don't uh, 
have direct management control of Claremore Hospital and we feel more uh, appropriate for them to continue to manage it since they manage the inpatient services there as well. Um, you know, they can better control the costs and, and keep referrals in. So, but the vast majority of the referrals that are being done uh, are outpatient. I mean, there's much more outpatient referrals than inpatient. So we would be picking up a large majority of the referrals if you were to take those three other counties. And, and so your your thoughts of what you're working on that when we get this trip is that everybody's going to go through Hastings? They would go through our CHS system. Yeah. And we're still looking at where they might go through. Like those that come through Claremore, we haven't talked to uh, George directly yet. Brett uh, has, I know, but since we approached the area office, we haven't talked directly with George. Uh, I mean, it would be nice if we had a, a small location there at Claremore, even out of their CHS office, if at all possible, for the patients that would get referred through there to see somebody right there. But those that came through uh, our Noata Clinic, you know, Bartlesville, uh, all those others, uh, Benita, the CHS people are right there. And so the referrals that are outpatient that need to be done, they would be taken care of in those clinics and go straight into the CHS referral system. Um, people that are in the Claremore Clinic that might need outpatient referrals, um, you know, we'll wor have to work that out exactly where those people go to get that referral. Um, you know, do, can we have someone on site right there at Claremore to do it if it's a Cherokee Nation employee or do we need to find another location, you know, for them to go to? Would they go back to one of those referral clinics or whatever, the closest place that they could do it or handle it by phone? That process would still need to be worked out. What's your idea of the success of the program that you just explained to? Well, we think because of the, the monies that we would get from IHS coupled with the 5% dividend, um, that we would be very, I mean, at that point, everything would be absorbed into one system. And, and it would either, either that, and correct me if I'm wrong, it would either, either that, that group of people would be elevated up to the 94% or 95%, or the whole system would come down to 94% or 93%. I mean, it would equalize out. Those people would be managed just the same as anyone else, and our approvals would, would essentially you know, be the same at that point because we're controlling it. So it's either going to elevate those or it's going to equalize at some other number that everybody's getting approved at. And, and Doc, if I put this on the table today, I, I need some assurances for you, from you and Brett that somebody's going to do some increased work and activity and thought process to getting these other folks approved. I mean, we've been doing that and we will continue to do that, Counselor, and I mean, we are close to having the numbers from uh, IHS. Like I said, Brett and I went up there. Um, we're just waiting to get some further clarifications of things. Once we have that, we can put a quick analysis together, um, run it by health administration, by the chief's office, uh, through you all, and, and then once we get a go, we'll we'll move forward on it. And the max would be 90 days. Once the, I'd like to see a, a shaking of the head yes from Yes, sir. Yeah. As, as, as it stands now, uh, patient sees a provider in no water today, uh, that's the referral's going to be reviewed tomorrow. I think that would be the case for 90 days plus from now. We would have that same, well that's some logistical challenges to work out with George, but he's always been very cooperative. I'm sure that would be a very And that would primarily be for those that happen to be at the Claremore Hospital that needed an outpatient referral. Um, but if they went to any of our other clinics, Right now, they would just be managed by the CHS staff at that clinic. You recognize our frustration? Yes, sir. Uh, Councilor Austin. I'm sorry, I was. I was I'm sorry. <laughs> Councilor Austin, at this time, I mean, I've, I've made a motion to have the line. Can I table at this point? Yes, sir. I make a motion to table for it. Would it, would, would it be possible that I could offer a friendly that would table for 60? And here's the way I feel about it, guys, and I'm being just I'm just being straight honest with you. I'm half in this area, half in another area. Mr. Lay has some very valid points, and we've been messing with this, messing with this, messing with this. Let's get it done. 
and I would ask you to think about 60 days and if you don't get it done then we're going to have to do some drastic things I, you know and I'm not I can see both sides because I'm here and I'm also in the area well, that and, and I understand but you've got most, most of your folks have 98 percent in mind but the ones I hear from are the ones that don't. So I, 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 I certainly see where he's coming from, and it's like everything that we've got in our report, they're just bombarding us with questions, and we just got to move faster, and I know that puts a lot of pressure on all of y'all, and I know you're doing the very best that you can, and that's why I'm asking Mr. Lay if he would consider a 60-day deal, but when you come back, if he considers it, when you come back in 60 days, you've got to have a plan. And it's, I'm, I'm like him, I'd like to see, I, I'd like to see it done. Because I want everybody in the same pot too. Everybody wants to be in the same basket and all be treated the same. And when y'all came up with that idea, I thought it was great. I just, I'm like, Mr. Lay, I just want to see her done. Madam Chair, I might clarify my motion. Okay. okay, we've got a motion to table for 60 days and a second. Now do we have any discussion on that? Dr. Gwynn, thank you for that explanation. Sometimes you speak a different language, but this time you seem to explain a, a, a good strategy. Well, thank and I think you. it's going to work. It's thank not, you. not an easy thing to understand even for us sometimes. I have that little map before me sometimes to remember. Sure. Brett's the only one that can remember it by memory. And you know, whether they're in Rogers County, Sequoia County, these are all Cherokees to me. It's that's gonna make it easier for sure. us to, and it'll make it easier to explain to our citizens. Um, it will be easier for you guys to explain to your constituents. So. Thank you all for your understanding, and we know it's taken a while to work out the 5%. We tried it one way, and we tried it another way, and now we'll move in this direction. I've got one comment. I'm glad, and I hope this, this will pass, but to me, the numbers that are reflected look very bad, but I don't think we're comparing apples to apples here because that one group has got all these different criteria there that they fall into different categories, and I'm hoping that the true number is higher than the 27 percent which was alarming so i think this is going to solve it and let's give it a try and i'm 100 percent for everybody in the in our jurisdictional area being treated exactly the same because we all have family and friends that live around town way anywhere else so i think we're ready to vote motion to table and we've got that on the table and it's been so all in favor of tabling for 60 days, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. One opposed. It's tabled for 60 days. Okay, if we've got any new business, there's none pending. And announcements. Next meeting is August twelfth at one p.m. I can't pay my for drama. Motion for drama. All in favor for drama? Aye. 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 Aye.